Welcome to another informational show about social media marketing. If you're a band, a business, or use social networking, you want to hear Highway to Success with your host, Cynthia McIntosh. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, 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 and welcome from beautiful, sunny Southern California. My name is Cynthia McIntosh, and I am your host here on the Highway to Success show on Indy 104. The Highway to Success show is brought to you by Success with McIntosh every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time here on Indy104.com. The purpose of this show is to help give you the tools you need to make the most of your social media marketing campaign. We honestly believe that social media marketing is a very important part of any business. Whether you are an attorney, a songwriter, an artist, or an accountant, no matter what kind of business you have, I feel it is vital that you have a strong social media marketing campaign. I also am strongly aware that to find information online about how to do social media marketing can be very overwhelming. There is so much out there and so many opinions on what to do. That's why we created the Highway to Success Show. We provided simple, easy to follow suggestions on how to create a social media marketing campaign that works. Sometimes we have professionals in different industries come on the show to discuss their business and how social media marketing works for them. Other times, I bring experts in specific areas of social media marketing on the show to share their expertise. And sometimes, I even bring my own clients on the show in order to discuss what they're doing and what we're doing with their social media marketing campaigns. I really enjoy doing this because it allows them to voice their concerns and their questions on the air because I know that some of you will share the same concerns and questions. But no matter what we do on the show, our goal is to inspire you and to help you through the maze we call social media marketing and to give you new and exciting ways to build your business. So, stay tuned and we will be right back after this.
And we're back with Highway to Success with Cynthia McIntosh. That was pretty fun music, wasn't it? You were just listening to White Daisy by the band Orange Grove of the Netherlands. You can get this song and get more information on Orange Grove by going to myspace.com forward slash Orange Grove Music. And you can also go to their website at ogband.com. If you miss those links, do not worry. At the end of this show, we will give you our website information, and we will post those links with this radio show archive file. So be sure to check them out. They play pop, reggae, and rock. And I'm sure you'll enjoy the other music they have online. So drop them a note, let them know you heard them here on Highway to Success on Indie 104, and tell them I said hi. Great job, guys. And I actually just received a note on my desk saying that they are going to be releasing a brand new song this Friday called Ready For It. So keep an eye out for that. So for those of you who are just tuning in, my name is Cynthia McIntosh and I am your host here on the Highway to Success show on Indy 104. And we are going to be talking about social media marketing. Social media marketing is not just getting on Facebook every day. There are a lot of steps to having a successful social media marketing campaign, and today I'm going to try and lay out a simple step-by-step -step plan that will hopefully help clear the cobwebs and help some of you see a little more clearly what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and when it needs to be done. To do that, first let me answer a really basic but relevant question. What exactly is social media marketing? There are social media marketing managers popping up everywhere and believe it or not when I say I'm a social media marketing manager nine times out of ten people look at me and say what is that my newest client told me she has people come in every day trying to sell her social media marketing services and they show her how many likes they have gotten for others Facebook pages and some of the less knowledgeable ones have even showed her how many friends they have gotten for certain Facebook pages let me tell you folks getting friends for your page is not a good thing. If your Facebook page is collecting friends, contact us. We need to talk. But even a bunch of likes isn't necessarily a good thing. I could get you a thousand likes today, but it won't do your business a bit of good. Social media marketing is, according to Wikipedia, the process of gaining website traffic or attention through social media sites. So anything you do on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, or any of the other social networks is specifically to get people to your website. If you're collecting a bunch of fans, but you're not driving traffic to your website, and if it isn't leading to sales, then really it isn't doing what it's supposed to do. That's pretty elementary. I know. But it's a good place to start. Okay, so now that we've established what social media marketing is, and what its basic objective is, the next thing to consider is, of course, how do we do it? Well, let me tell you, folks, you can ask 100 experts that question. And I can guarantee you you're going to get at least 101 different answers. But let me just review a few basic preliminary considerations you might want to review. First off, there are many different social media sites. And new ones keep popping up all the time. And while there are many sites, each one has its own functions and applications. Working together, they are a very powerful marketing technique. So I thought it would be a good idea to discuss a few of them here and give you a brief description of each one and their individual applications. The social media site most commonly associated with social media marketing is, of course, Facebook. As of June 2012, more than 150 million Americans had a Facebook page, according to ConsumerReports.com. That's quite a few. A Facebook fan page, as opposed to a personal page, is great for engaging potential customers and the people who may influence them. To have a successful fan page, a company must have a strong strategic objective. Share a good mix of engaging content that includes links, pictures, comments, questions, and videos. And have custom tabs for upcoming events and other information and post daily to engage the selected target market and those who influence that target market. It's important to get them involved. If you're not getting them involved in what you're posting, it's not working. And remember, the whole purpose for everything you put on there is to direct traffic to your website. 
If you would like us to take a look at your Facebook page and give you a free consultation, feel free to go on our website and request one. We'd be more than happy to do that for you. LinkedIn is another social media site that, if used correctly, can be an extremely powerful tool. LinkedIn has a more professional format. Rather than primarily posting interesting content, LinkedIn strategy revolves more around also creating groups and identifying with other groups and following and participating in those groups. Get active with groups that will help promote your business. The key to LinkedIn is to join groups and be sure to participate. Don't use them just to get sales or support, but really support those in your groups as well and create strong relationships and build credibility. You want to be sure to post your complete resume on there and any projects you've done in the past and anything that's going to, to set you up as a professional and set you up as a real expert in your field. And then you want to, want to make yourself available to share your expertise with other people, with people that are in your field and also people that are in a related field that can use your help. And that way, you're creating real strong relationships, and that's what it's all about. And again, you want to do things that are going to lead people back to your website. I know I keep saying that, but really, that's what this is all about. And your website is your home. So that is where you put everything that is going to make a sale for you. You do not want to use any of these social media pages to make sales. That really is not the purpose. The purpose of these pages is to create relationships and to get people to your website, which is where you do the selling. Now, of course, you can sell things through Facebook and LinkedIn and any of the other social sites, but the point is you do not want to over-promote yourself and your selling on these pages. These pages are to create relationships, and if you try too hard to sell and that's all your focus is, you're going to get, make people lose interest. This is a social media campaign to create relationships. The relationships will create the sales. You can obviously post coupons and post tickets or whatever it is that you sell on these pages for selling, but that should not be your main focus. Another page that's often overlooked is Google+. Google+, Plus is a great site because if for no other reason, it's owned by Google. It is easily linked to YouTube, which is also owned by Google. Google Plus is built around groups that it calls circles. You can find circles of people and you can create your own circles. You can search out circles of people who have common interests or who will be good contacts for your business. But what really sets Google Plus apart from others is what they call Hangouts. Hangouts, which are video chats, and they are absolutely free, are a great way to offer consulting, small webinars, or just fun video chat events. If you use these once a week to build great relationships, it's a lot of fun. And the neat thing about it is, is that because Google Plus is owned by Google, and so is YouTube, Google Plus is set up so that you can do these video chats and save them as a video and immediately post them on YouTube. So if you do a free consultation or if you do a little webinar and you save it, you can post it on YouTube and it is getting promoted on there as well. So it's a really awesome way to get your information out there. If you post it on YouTube and then of course link it to your Facebook page and everything else, put it on your website, there you have it. You're really using it right. Now again, everything is supposed to lead to your website, but you can use this as a great tool for doing that. Not only can you talk about your website and your business in these little webinars or these video chats, but when you post it on YouTube, be sure that you include your website in the description of the video, that you put your link in there. And then the other common website that's used is Twitter. Twitter is for microblogging. The best way to use Twitter is to use it for the promotion of your other content on your other websites. Link to Facebook and other sites so that your contact on those sites is promoted on Twitter and you can get more exposure. You can also, and it's very important, to follow people in your industry and to build reputations and build relationships by joining groups on there as well, just like you would do in LinkedIn. This is easily done by following groups of people that are not only in your industry, but people that are in similar industries or 
in related industries and creating relationships. And you can provide information for them and help them and build credibility as well through LinkedIn. But primarily you would be using Twitter to get people to go to your other content. In other words, if you post something on YouTube, you would post the link on Twitter to get people to go over to YouTube and watch your video, which would lead people to what? Your website. And speaking of, never underestimate the power of YouTube. Regardless of the kind of business you are in, put some thought into it. Come up with some interesting, engaging videos and post on YouTube regularly. Tag properly, promote properly, and use the tools that YouTube provides and be sure to share on other social media sites. It does take time, but it is well worth it. YouTube is huge, and it does not matter what kind of business you're in. If you're an attorney, then do two-minute videos on specific things that are going on right now in your industry or certain laws that are going to be passed. It helps to set yourself up, build credibility, and to make and build relationships. That's what it's all about. It really does not matter. I talk to so many people that says, well, in my business, I don't really know what I would do videos about. You can do it. It might take a little bit of creativity, but it can be done. And these do not need to be long videos. And they shouldn't be long videos. A two-minute video is long. No more than two. But there are so many people that have been, quote, unquote, discovered through YouTube that you just do not want to dismiss it. People look on YouTube for information on just about anything. And if people Google for information on just about anything, a lot of times a YouTube video is what's going to pop up to give them information. And the key to using YouTube is to be sure that you name your video in a way that you are using keywords so that when people are looking up information, they will find your video. That is really important. I find a lot of times that people put names on their videos that nobody's going to find. If your name is Carl Smith, do not title your video, Carl Smith Plays Guitar, because nobody is going to be doing a search for Carl Smith Plays Guitar unless they know you personally. If your name is Carlos Santana, maybe you can get away with that. But for the most part, you need to think about what you're naming your video so that people will find you when they do any kind of a keyword search. You want to be sure that if they search you, whether it be in Google or in YouTube, that they will find you. And here's something that you can do that might help you. Go into your web browser and type in Google Keyword Tool. And that will help you to find keywords that will work so that people will find you, whether you're putting your work in, into YouTube or anywhere else. I know that this is a lot of information. It can sound overwhelming, but it really isn't. And when we get back, we'll talk a little bit about how to make this a little bit more simple. But I just wanted to give you a breakdown on some of the more popular social sites and how they work and the best way to use them. So hopefully this information has helped you a little bit. And if it has, please go to our website. Go to the Success with Macintosh website and go to our blog. And on our blog, you will see the posting is Facebook enough for social media marketing? And in that post, you will find a lot of the information that we just reviewed today. So go ahead and read that blog, and it will help you to go through this information once again. And when you do, go to the comment box and let us know your experience with social media marketing. What social websites do you use? Which ones work best for you? And please share your story with us. And if you have any specific questions, please click on the radio show tab on our website and scroll down just a little ways until you see the comment box and post in there what questions you have and I will be sure to respond to those questions as soon as I can on the radio show. So when we come back I'm going to try and break all this down and I will explain to you basically how I do this for clients and hopefully that will help you to kind of set up a social media marketing campaign. We will also cover a couple of other things that will help your social media marketing campaign work a little bit better for you. And I am hoping that you will get some tools that will be really exciting to you and help you to build your business and promote your business and promote your band or whatever kind of business you are in. And keep in mind, any of the things that we are talking about today, if you have any questions, 
please feel free to go on our website and request information, request a consult, and we'd be more than happy to sit down and look at your information with you and let you know what you can do to improve your social media marketing campaign. So please feel free to do that. So we're going to take a short little break. So stay tuned, and we will be back right after this. We'll be right back with Highway to Success with Cynthia McIntosh right after this. Can you guess what's going on here? It's kids getting fit. Studies show that children and teens who get at least 60 minutes of physical activity a day reduce the risk of obesity, heart disease, anxiety, and increase their overall mood. So whether it's around your neighborhood or at school, just get out and play. For your free booklet, visit WRInstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. The Will Rogers Institute, since 1936. These are the sounds of someone taking their eyes off the road. Texting while driving is more than distracting. It's dangerous. Do yourself a favor. Do us all a favor. When you're on the road, stay off the phone. A message from CTIA, America's wireless companies, and the National Safety Council. Hi, this is Cynthia with the Highway to Success Show. I want to thank you for listening to our show today, and I sincerely hope that you're learning new and exciting ways to improve your marketing campaign and to build your business. I want to remind you that we will be here every Wednesday at noon, Pacific Standard Time, to bring you experts in the field of social media marketing, promotions, and business management. So be sure to tune in each week. The Highway to Success Show is brought to you by Success with Macintosh, and you can visit us on the web at successwithmacintosh.com or call us at 866-636-4696. That number again is 866-636-4696, or you can visit us on the web at successwithmacintosh.com. Hi, I'm comedian Carol Liefer. Animal experiments are no joke. Thank goodness, scientists are finding better, more humane ways to develop treatments for cancer and other killer diseases. I hope you'll learn more about the Humane Charity Seal of Approval. It helps donors find charities that provide vital care and advanced research without using animals. For information on how you can give and let live, go to HumaneSeal.org. That's HumaneSeal.org. Hi, this is Cynthia from the Highway to Success Talk Show. If you or anyone in your family is an animal lover, I would like to tell you about a friend of mine, Ronnie, at A Cut Above Pet Salon in Laverne, California. A Cut Above Pet Salon provides wonderful care for your pets and also has a beautiful boutique where you can purchase everything from high-quality gourmet treats to beautiful handmade crystal collars to adorable clothing. Everything your pampered pet needs. And if you don't have a pet, the Cut Above Pet Salon also has a no-kill pet rescue that provides shelter and care for rabbits, cats and kittens, dogs and puppies, and even turtles. Just go to your petsalon.com for information on how you can provide a loving home for one of our friends that she is currently taking care of, or how you can help support the animals waiting for a home. Please visit yourpetsalon.com or call Ronnie at 951-203-5560. That number again is 951 951- Two zero three five five six zero, or visit her at yourpetssalon.com. Chances are, if you receive Social Security benefits, Supplemental Security Income (SSI), or any federal payment, you get it electronically. 
If you don't, that's about to change. By March 1, 2013, nearly all federal non-tax payments must be made electronically, including Social Security and SSI. You have the option of direct deposit to your bank or credit union account or into a direct express debit card account. Learn more at www.godirect.org. Electronic payments are safer, easier, and more reliable than paper checks. They save the taxpayers money, and it's good for the environment. There are many reasons to go electronic. If you still get your Social Security or SSI payment in the mail, don't wait for the mandate. Visit www.godirect.org to go electronic today. And we're back with Highway to Success with Cynthia McIntosh. Welcome back. This is Cynthia McIntosh, and you are listening to the Highway to Success show here on Indy104.com. And we are talking about social media marketing and how to make it work for your business and breaking it down to make it as simple as possible and as efficient as possible. One of the things that's really important, in fact, it's one of the most important things about social media marketing, is being consistent. And so being efficient so that you can afford to be consistent is actually a very important part of doing social media marketing. The more tools you can use to make yourself efficient, the better off and the more successful you're going to be with your social media marketing campaign. So we'll be sharing a few of those with you as well. The principles that we are discussing today apply to any business. So don't feel like the kind of business you're in is excluded from any of these principles because it's not. If you need help, if you need any kind of direction on doing any of these things, please feel free to contact us and we'd be more than happy to help you. But the important thing is to be sure that you do it and then it gets done. And it gets done in a timely, consistent manner. Consistency is very, very important. I honestly cannot emphasize that enough. So let me ask you guys a question. How many of you recognize this sound? For those of you who were familiar with that sound, that means you're familiar with Microsoft Outlook. And any time that you put a task in there or you have anything in your calendar with a reminder, you hear that sound. That is actually one of my favorite tools. I have everything that I need to do for my social media marketing listed in my tasks for the day and it really helps me a lot. Between my Microsoft Outlook calendar and my cell phone, that's my whole life, man. If I didn't have those things, I would be lost, and I do mean seriously lost. If I ever lost either one of those, I'd be in big trouble. So I'm going to let you take a little peek into what I have on my tasks in my Microsoft Outlook. Now, you might not have Microsoft Outlook, but I do strongly suggest that you get some kind of calendar on your computer that you can keep track of all these things on, and it will make your life much easier. So the first task that I have on my calendar for every day is to post to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Now I personally believe that just posting once a day on these three social media sites is plenty. As long as you put on there something that is really interesting and relevant to the people reading it, which hopefully is going to be your customers and potential customers. And that brings up an important subject. You really need to know who your customer base is. You need to know who your target market is. And so one of the important things about posting like this is to be sure that the information that you're posting is something that's really going to draw attention to the people that you're trying to reach. So the first step to doing this is to really sit down and think about your target market and what kind of people you're trying to reach. This includes anything that's relevant to the people that you're trying to reach specifically. And find out, think about what they are interested in and then be sure that you're going to post things that is going to attract them. And once you get them onto your page because of the information, then you're able to really create a relationship with them. Now the reason this is really important is because if you have a Facebook page that's a business page, you cannot go from a business page and just go talk to an individual. That individual needs to find you first and they need to like your page before you can go talk to them. The reason for this is that Facebook is really tough on spamming and this is their way of avoiding it. And it is a wonderful thing, 
but what it means is that you have got to put information on there that they are going to find interesting and they're going to share with other people and then those people are going to find you and come and like your page so that you can talk to them. So the more interesting and relevant the information is on your Facebook page, the better your chances of getting people to come to it. And that is really, in a nutshell, how you get likes on Facebook. Now all this might sound a little bit overwhelming, but I'm going to share a tool with you that I personally use and I really enjoy. And I think you will find it very useful as well. I use what's called Sprout Social. You can go to SproutSocial.com and they have a service that allows you to go to RSS feeds and pick and choose what information you are looking for. And then every day you can go on to Sprout Social and you will see a list of all these articles and blogs and just about anything that's been posted regarding the subject matter you are looking for. And then you can just share it directly from there. You just click on a share button and it will go onto your Facebook page. Now what's really neat about this is that not only can you do that, but you can schedule it so that if you want something to post tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock in the morning but you're not going to be up yet, you can do that. You can post it for any time or day and it will be posted at that time. That really helps you to be a lot more efficient. I personally don't like to post things days later though because by the time that it gets to Facebook it's outdated. So I like to have stuff that's interesting and relevant and up to date. So I really try not to post anything more than 24 hours after it's originally been put on the internet. But it is really helpful to use Sprout Social. And you can also create your own comments from Sprout Social to have post at a later date. So for example, on February 12th, if you had decided that you wanted to post a nice Valentine's Day card on your Facebook page, you would go ahead, you could do so by creating it and putting it on Sprout Social on the 12th and it would post on the 14th. So you wouldn't have to go on the 14th and do it. So this can be very helpful. I use it a lot. Um, the other nice thing about it is, is that Sprout Social is set up so that you can have it post to Facebook Twitter and LinkedIn. So you take care of all three at one time. So that is one tool that I use that I'm sure that if you go on and, and research you will really appreciate. It saves me a lot of time. I try not to use it every day though because you do want to post things on there that are a little bit more personal than just going and looking up information and blogs and whatnot. But it is fun to go on there and keep up to date with current things and then if you're interested chances are your customers or your client base is also interested so you can put them on there. For example with bands it's fun to go and keep up to date on the newest musical equipment. If a new gadget comes out I can immediately be one of the first people that knows and then post it on the band pages that I work with and people appreciate that and it's fun. So you want to be sure that you post things that are really interesting and the point for doing this again is that if you post something on Facebook that's really interesting and somebody that is already a fan of your page sees it and finds it interesting, as soon as they click like or make a comment or share it, all their friends that may not know you are going to get a notice that their friend liked your page. And so you're going to get new people coming to your page. And that's what Facebook is all about. So when you do put things on there, be sure that you put things on there that are going to be of interest to people. Put videos, and you can do that again from Sprout Social, but be sure you put videos, put pictures. Another really good thing to do is ask questions and take polls. This is really important because that's getting people involved. And if you put things on there that people are going to want to share, then it's going to spread. It's very viral. So it's important that you put things on there that's going to be important. And that's one of the things I like about Sprout Social is that it gives you all the up-to-date, relevant articles, videos, blogs about any given subject that you pick and choose. Now, going through Sprout Social to do this will only take you about 10 minutes at the most. So it's not a big time-consuming thing to do. The next thing on my task list is to actually go to Facebook and LinkedIn and spend about 15 minutes on communicating with these people. If somebody responds, and this is something people miss but it's extremely important, if someone responds to anything that you have posted, 
you need to respond to them. So if somebody comments on a picture you posted, you want to be sure that you say thanks for the comment or respond to the comment somehow so that they know that you're actually going on that page and communicating with them. It's all about relationships, which has to be a two-way conversation. So you don't want to just make it a habit of going and posting on Facebook and posting on LinkedIn and then just letting it go. You want to be sure that you go to Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter and actually respond to people that are responding to you. On Twitter and LinkedIn, primarily LinkedIn, be involved in groups. And so you want to be sure that you go to those groups and see if people have questions that you can answer, see how you can get involved in any of the communication that's going on, and be part of the community there on LinkedIn and Twitter. This is all about relationships. So you want to be sure that you do take the time to get to know people. And really, once you get to do it, it's a lot of fun. And it's great for business. And it does not take that much time. Like I said, in 15 minutes, you can go to both LinkedIn and Twitter and take care of what you need to take care of, unless you really get a big conversation going, in which case you want to hang out there because you might get business out of it. Or you might be able to really help somebody and it'll come back to you later. But be sure you spend some time on there creating relationships and going into the different groups. Find leaders in your field of expertise. Find leaders in your industry. And find people that are the shakers and movers in your industry. They're going to be on there. Get on there. Get to know them. Let them get to know you. Learn from them. Help them. And it will come back to you in business. And then also go to related industries, related fields. Find the shakers and movers and leaders in those areas and get to know them, create relationships with them, talk to them. And when you get involved in these groups, there will be people that will ask questions and you will be able to answer them. In fact, you can create your own question and answer page, which is very helpful because then it really sets you up as an expert in your field. So you can set up a question and answer page where people go to ask questions and you go on there and answer. And not only is it fun, but it can become very interesting. You're going to find that what's really hard is just getting off and getting to work. <laughs> but you do not have to spend a lot of time on it. 15 minutes a day. So, so far, what have we talked about? 10 minutes on Sprout Social maximum. You can probably do it in a lot less because all the research has already been done for you through Sprout Social. It's just a matter of picking the article you want to post and posting it. So yeah, you can actually get it done in a lot less than 10 minutes. But if you really want to spend time and you really want to get into it and you get involved in what you're doing and you get interested in what you're doing, it can take you up to 10 minutes. But maximum 10 minutes, 15 minutes on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook on responding. And so you've spent, what, 25 minutes so far, right? Okay, so next thing on my list is once a week do three videos. Okay, now I know some of you have just said, okay, we're done, not happening, can't do it, don't even know what I would do a video on. I get some negative reactions to this, but it's not that hard. In fact, I was talking earlier in the show about Google+. Google+, Plus has what they call Hangouts, and it is a perfect way of creating videos, just short little videos. All you need to do is go on there, create a hangout, advertise it, very easy to do, and have two or three people meet you and talk about something relevant to your business. If you're a musician, of course it's easy because you're going to always have videos of rehearsals or gigs or something, so you'll have them. But let's say you're an attorney. What in the world are you going to do a video on? You know what? You're in the perfect position to do a how-to video or to update us on a certain current event that's coming up or how to fill out forms or what to do in the case of. So there's always something you could do a video on. And here's what I would suggest. If you have two or three clients that have a similar problem or a similar question, have them meet you right there on the Hangout on Google+. Plus. Answer their question and discuss it in a matter of two minutes. Save it as a video. Post it. Now what you're doing, you're not giving away your services. 
but you are doing something to make people curious. Now be sure when you do that that when you post it, you post the information so they can get a hold of you, do a little plug for your business and why they should go to you for these services, and it serves a lot of different purposes. As an accountant, right now we're going through tax season. It's the perfect time for accountants and CPAs and tax preparers to do little hangouts on what do you do if, how do I get information together, what do I need for this, what if this has happened. Do little how-tos, get current clients to meet you on there, answer their questions. If your clients have certain questions, chances are real good that outsiders are going to have the same questions. Use it to your advantage. It's not that hard to do, only takes a couple of minutes and it will do a lot of good. So, three of those a week, well actually three videos a week, not necessarily three hangouts, but you can do, well, do it however you want to do it, just be sure that you get three videos a week. And the easiest way to do that is to do them all at once. And then just post them individually every other day for the week. So you post them on separate days, post them on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. But the big thing is to do it and be consistent. Consistency, consistency, consistency. It's not easy for any of us, but it's very important. So be sure you do it. You can find interesting ways of doing it. In fact, you don't necessarily even have to leave your office to do it. A lot of times it's very easy to find ways of videotaping what you're doing while you're doing it and make a video out of it without even having to walk away from work. I find that is really, if I think about it and I get creative with it, I find that it's not really that hard to do for a lot of my clients. So think about it. Again, if you have questions, if you need some help with it, give us a call. We'd be more than happy to discuss it with you and we can work through it. It is doable though and it is not time consuming. Each one of these videos only has to be about two minutes long. In fact, you don't want it any longer than that. So you're talking two minutes per video, three videos in one day, how much time does that take you? Setup time in all, maybe 10 minutes. All right, so again, now we're at, we had 10 minutes on Sprout Social, 15 minutes on the, the social pages, and now we're looking at maybe another 15 minutes. So, you know, you're really not spending that much time. And the videos is only once a week. Next thing on the task list, is blogs. This again is something people say, uh uh, just don't have the time. And I have to tell you again, it doesn't take that much time. Now, here's a suggestion that works really well. You just did three videos. Take those three videos and make a blog out of them. So you have your three blogs. You do a video blog, you take those blogs, put them in the take those videos put them in the blog and then just write a little something about them and there you've got your blogs and then just don't post them all on the same day post them on one day, Monday, Wednesday and Friday and you've got it all done in one day won't take you that long and you've got your job done for you now if you take just these steps that I just talked about you're gonna get real far in the social media marketing you've already accomplished most of what you need to in order to be successful Again, if you have any questions, if you need any support, if you're just not sure what to do, you can always feel free to write to us and ask us for a consultation. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. And a lot of times it does help just to get somebody else to sit there and brainstorm with you and come up with ideas. The biggest problem that most people have is just the roadblock, the mental block that comes up when you think about everything that has to be done. But again, if you use your calendar on your computer and just remind yourself on your slow day, maybe Monday, spend an hour taking care of the videos and blogs. Every morning, give yourself half an hour to do a little bit of social media marketing. And then you're done. That's really all it takes. Okay, and then the last thing on my list of tasks is only done twice a month. And once it's really easy. And that's newsletters. Now again, this a lot of times scares people when they think about having to do it. But it really does not need to be that hard or that time consuming. So if you're one of those people that's panicking and thinking you just absolutely can't do it, hear me out, okay? I do have some suggestions for you. All right, so you wanna send out a newsletter twice a month. 
You want to send one out around the 1st and one around the 15th. The one on the 15th, you want to have just really short and sweet. If you're the kind of business that has a calendar of events, then send that out. If you're not, send out just a reminder, send out a coupon, send out a special, but just something that puts your name and your face out there that reminds people of who you are and where you are and what you do. The one that you send out on the 1st is a full-blown newsletter. This one will take a little bit more time. However, with a little bit of thought, you don't have to make it that difficult. For example, you can have, a, have one of your clients or customers write one of the articles. They love it, they get some promotion, and it gets some of your work done for your newsletter. Again, you can send a coupon in it. You can write a short article. It does not have to be long, nor should it be. You can actually put one of your blogs in there as an article or a video that you already wrote anyway. Um, you can have a customer of the month article, which they love, and it doesn't take that long to do, and you can even have them write it. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do that won't make it that difficult. It is kind of nice to write an article on your own that sets you up as a, an expert in your field. So it doesn't hurt, and it's a good idea to actually write an article that you put in there every month. It's once a month, folks doesn't take that long it's not supposed to be long so you're talking two paragraphs but it does do a lot of good so it will probably take you a matter of half an hour twice a month to do a newsletter now what I use is constant contact you've probably heard me if you listen to this show you've heard me mention constant contact before and now that if you haven't heard of constant contact now that you have you're gonna see it everywhere because a lot of people use it Constant contact is great. Now when you're doing when you're using constant contact, one of the really important things to do is be sure that you use the tools that they have because it makes your life a lot easier. You can use constant contact. There's a tool that they use. It's an app that you put on your Facebook page and you can put it on your website that helps you to accumulate names and emails and addresses for your newsletter. And if used properly, it really does a good job and they have all the information on there. They also have a blog that will give you tons of information on what to put in your newsletter and they've got great ideas. So I would strongly suggest getting involved with Constant Contact. Just go to constantcontact.com, look them up. It's very inexpensive and it's a wonderful way to promote your business and really get your name out there. Now it will take you approximately an hour to set it up the first time. By the time you pick and choose what format you're going to use, what template you're going to use and how you're going to lay it out. It'll probably take you about an hour. After that, it's a piece of cake. It's just dropping the information in there. It won't take you any time at all. So you just need to go in there, create a couple of templates, one for your first of the month newsletter and one for your second newsletter of the month. And then once a month, pop the information in there. It doesn't take much time at all. Primarily what I wanted to get across to you today in this show was that it is doable and that it does not need to take as much time as a lot of people feel that it does. You don't need to spend a bunch of time on Facebook. You don't need to spend a lot of time on videos, but you do need to spend the time necessary to do the job and be consistent with it. So I'm hoping that this show has helped you to kind of think things through and see how, it, how you need to schedule yourself in order to make this happen. And I sincerely hope that some of the tools that I shared with you today will help you to do your social media marketing. And I do understand that not everybody has the interest and or the time or desire to do their own social media marketing. So, so if you feel like you are one of those people, please feel free to go to successwithmacintosh.com or call us at 866-636-4696 and we would be more than happy to discuss your social media marketing needs with you and to see how we can best serve your business. I want to thank you all again for listening to the Highway to Success show. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to remind you that you can listen to this and all your other favorite Indy 104 shows by going to Indy104.com and going to the On Demand page. The Highway to Success show was brought to you by Success with Macintosh. You can find us on successwithmacintosh.com or you can call us at 866-636-4696. Again, that number is 866-636-4696 or you can visit us on successwithmacintosh.com. 
And with that, I'll say goodbye, and we will see you here next week on Indie 104.